in Vegas on Summer League, but there's been an interesting development. Paolo Bancaro, the number one pick in the draft. He played great in one game, played great in the second game. Well, news came out yesterday that he's been shut down. We've seen enough of Paolo Bencaro, the, the Magic are saying. We need to give some younger guys a chance to prove themselves. What do you think about after two games shutting down the number one pick in Summer League? Uh -oh. This is what I think. Jalen's upset. Jalen's upset. We're load managing Summer League with a rookie. Correct. Correct. <laughs> come on, man. Like, come on, dog. Like, like, these games used to be five days in a row. And all of the best players would play in the games. These are rookies. By the way, why do you play basketball? I hope one of the reasons is because it's fun to you. The mm. other thing, because you're good at it and you want to constantly improve. I'm not blaming the player in this instance, but as a player, I would tell the team, I want to be out there and produce. Like, I'm a number one pick. I need the experience. Like, this is just, like, like for my Pistons, I'm going to go watch them play today. It's unfortunate that Jay Nivey got injured, right? He came down on a, a defender's foot and he hurt his ankle and you want to be cautious there. I understand that. But Ben Carroll was just doing 360 dunks and blocking shots at the rim the previous game. Like sitting him out doesn't make him a better player when he gets to Orlando. So again, I don't like it at all. You know I hate low management, but this is why they're coming with the end season playing tournament. When you look at the bottom of the ticker and they say the play in tournament is going to be permanent, this is why. This is why. Because you got to get people to invest. Well, I wanted to see the matchup between Bancaro and Chet Holmgren. Didn't get a chance to see that. But Chet, again, impressive. 7 for 10 from the field at 10 rebounds, 2 blocks. Played only 27 minutes. What do you think about what you've seen so far from Chet Holmgren, the number 2 pick? I got a term for you that was used for another player who was a 20-point scorer but it actually applies for Chet. He's an actual unicorn. Okay. <laughs> an actual unicorn. <laughs> and, and, and the reason that I'm gonna like separate him from Porzingis in this case is elite shot blocker. Mm -hmm. like, like when you got somebody that's gonna change shots, contest shots, and block as many shots as he does, if he has two blocks, he's gonna change 10. And then if he grabs 10 rebounds, you, that's 20 different possessions that he had a real effect on. Like, that's major. Plus, he got handled, can shoot the three, and is a lob threat. And by the way, I love the chemistry that him and Giddy are getting. Giddy looks good. You know what I'm good. saying? Yeah, I love, I love the pace that he plays with at the point. I love how he tries to feed Chet on the inside. Like, they're growing something special. When they add them with SGA, that, that, that's going to be something special in OKC See, I for years to come. I understand why people compare him to Porzingis. They both are very skinny coming into the draft. They both are seven feet tall, can shoot threes. But Chet's game is just so much more developed. Like, he's got handle. He'll bring it up in transition. You don't see Chris Tass Porzingis getting a rebound and then just leading the break and going behind the back around people. I love Chet Holmgren, especially what I've seen from him in Las Vegas. And I love that he's still playing, unlike Paolo Bancaro. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.